Hey everyone, today I'm gonna show you what's in my clinical bag. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, this is my clinical bag. It looks like this. This is actually my school and clinical bag because I originally got this bag for clinical and I just loved it so much it ended up being my school bag. And this is why I love it is, so this bag is by Jax and they make like a lot of like lunch boxes and stuff but then they have like a set of gym bags as well and I think this is technically a gym bag. But on the back side you have this little compartment I actually have something in there right now, but it's waterproof and it holds like food. So I'll put my lunch in there or my uh, dinner for clinical if I'm in the evening or it's just nice to have that option because I hate when you have to put like the food in with your paperwork and then you're nervous it's going to spill or you have to bring a whole separate lunch bag and it's just a pain. So that's the first thing that's back. I have these little containers and this one is just, this is actually flat tummy tea, sent me some tea in this. So I have this one and I have this one that says your peach. And inside, so inside this one, I have my stethoscope. This is a Littman. Um, I don't remember which one it is, but it's the one that looks like this. They recommend you get it. I got the black on black because I just feel like I don't know. I feel like black is very professional and like classy and I don't know. It goes with everything. So I got the black on black. I really liked the, I think there's like a rose gold one too that I liked, but I ended up getting the black on black. All right. So that's my stethoscope. Then in this one, this is kind of where I put everything else. So I have pen light and we have clamp and scissors. Um, I put some pencils and pens in here. I'm not gonna pull those up. Okay, so I also have, so when you're in nursing school, when you start off your first semester, they're gonna have you make what they call med cards, which is on an index card you write you know, the med, what drug class it is in, what it's used for, what are the typical side effects, what are the really bad side effects you have to watch for. And so you make these cards and let me tell you, save the cards because you use them over and over again throughout the semester, especially like clinical sim, they love to use like the common meds that you would have already made cards for. So it's monotonous to have to make the cards multiple times. So. I saved all the ones I used first semester, and then every semester after that, I would only have to make a couple med cards. It really wasn't that many because I just had my basis already. So um, as you can see, I just have a ton of med cards here. Um, let me give you an example. This is a good one. So I'll go on like Davis Drug Guide or Nurse Central online. I'm not sure what you guys use. And I just kind of copy and paste the important things, and it looks like this. I don't know if you can see that. but. So I have those in here in case my clinical instructor wants me. It depends, every clinical instructor is different. Some don't really want you to have the note cards. They want you to just like reiterate what you remember and then some of them are like, where's your note cards? So, you know, you just have to see. Okay, so I also have two watches. I highly recommend you get two watches because in just cheap ones, um, one's from CVS, one's from Walmart, I think, and or Target. And, you know, you need these to calculate your patient's heart rate, to count respirations, things like that. Super important. I don't even, I mean, there's ways around it. Like, I know some thermometers, uh, especially in, like, the pediatric setting, the, like, bulky thermometers, they have a timer on them. But if, you know, you're looking for a clock in a patient's room and your eyes aren't that good, it can be a real pain. So, I always bring two in case you take one off after clinical and misplace it. Okay, and then I have, because I'm a little neurotic, a ton of alcohol wipes, like literally a ton, and a germicidal disposable wipe, yes. So, fun fact, I am a total germaphobe, and it's like, you know, some people might be like, how can you be a nurse if you're a germaphobe? And this, this is my, my little germaphobe story. 
So when I was younger, I, I was sick and I was immunocompromised, so I got sick all the time from germs and viruses and everything. So I really think about my patients in that sense. Like it's very easy to go and listen to your patient's heart rate and walk out of the room and of course you wash your hands. Some people don't, but you should. And you forget to wipe your stethoscope off and you go off to the next patient and you take a heart rate and it's like, well, you just transferred the germs from one patient to another and both of those patients probably don't have the best immune system if they're in the hospital. And it's just, it's not good. That's how things spread throughout the hospital. And I know it kind of seems like, is it really important that I wipe down the bell of my stethoscope every single time between patients? Yes, it is. Do you really want to be that person who spreads MRSA or something? Because a lot of times like C. diff or MRSA, like they'll catch it and they'll put the room on precautions. But there is sometimes a little bit of, there's a window that they have it and yet the hospital don't know. So you really want to make sure that you use germaphobe tendencies, you know? So I'm a germaphobe and I, I wipe everything down with alcohol and bleach and everything else. I just, I like, I like cleanliness. All right, what else do we have in here? So I got the, these at the dollar store and they're great. So they're index cards, but they're index cards in a little thing like this. So I just stick this in my pocket and then when I go in the room and take vitals, I'll write them down on one of these cards and then I can go and put them in the computer when I leave the room. Because being nursing students, we don't have like the cow cards that you can bring around. So you don't want to rely on remembering the vitals. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a patient's room, taken vitals, and as I'm walking out, it's like something distracts you or somebody needs your help or, you know, there's... I mean, there's like five different vitals that you have to remember and you might be like, oh yeah, they're easy to remember, but they're really not. And some of these things are really important, specifically like blood sugars. If you're taking a blood sugar, you need to make sure that that number is 100% correct. And you may not be able to put it into the computer until, you know, a little later. I mean, some of them automatically populate up from the blood sugar machine, but it's still these things, like you put down the wrong blood pressure, you could miss a patient going into shock or something, you know what I mean? So you want to make sure vital signs are one of the first signs that something is wrong. So it's really important you have the right numbers. So get one of these, stick them in your pocket. Okay, so then I have a planner. This one's a giant planner, but I really like it. I've tried every size of these happy planners and I honestly like the bigger ones better because I feel like I can write down enough stuff. I mostly plan in my um, Google Calendar, but I like to have a backup, like in case Google goes down, which probably would never happen, I'm telling you I'm neurotic. Um, but if it did, I have this one too. These are just kind of little things. Tissues, hand sanitizer, chapstick. Could probably use some cream too. I don't have it in this bag, but hospitals are very dry, so it's good to have those things. Let's see what else. So pens, pencils, okay, so lastly, I have two more. I have this blue folder, and in this blue folder, I used to have a binder I would bring to clinical, but I ended up finding it was like too bulky. So right now I have everything separated with paper clips. I don't wanna show you guys things that you don't want to see. But I'm separated with paper clips, but a lot of times I'll get the clear fol folders. I haven't printed off everything yet because today's the first day of class, but I'll have like the clinical paperwork. I have to pass in each one separated into a clear folder inside this blue folder. So when it's the end of the week and I have to submit a clinical eval for the week, I'll just pull it right out of the clear plastic folders inside my blue folder. Okay, so in here I have like my syllabuses, some notes, I have some, I don't know, let me see. I have some reference sheets. So like here, different lab values, things like that. Oh my gosh, everything's falling. So just anything that I feel will help me in the learning process, I will put in this folder. So, and like I said, I used to have a binder and I would put the clear inserts into the binder, like clip them in, but it's just to walk around with the binder. It's, it's a little bit bulky, at least like a folder. It just feels like it's less stuff. And I always just feel like bulky in clinical because you know, in your pockets, you get 
scissors and pen lights and a notebook in one, one um, pocket and then the other pocket you have your stethoscope and your cell phone because we use like Davis drug guide on our cell phones as a reference and then plus your camera and device just like so much stuff so I like this it makes me feel a little bit lighter. <laughs> Okay, and then lastly, I have a journal that I keep in my clinical bag. So this is something new that I'm doing this semester. So because we are doing psych this semester, part of it is that we have to do journal entries after each day after clinical, just kind of reflecting on what we experienced, what we felt, what happened, something about our patients. But we talked about in class that it has been found that reflection upon clinical really um, helps increase learning in the clinical setting. So I've decided that all semester I'm going to use my journal and I'm just going to write um, after clinical just some like thoughts and feelings and like what happened that day because last semester I used to write like my patient data or like just things about my patient on a piece of paper and then I would shred it after clinical. And then at the end of the semester, like we would do care plans or papers and things like that. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had that information. What did that patient have? Like, I forget. And of course, you have to be mindful of HIPAA, so not putting any like names or any information that if I left this somewhere and somebody picked it up, they could be like, oh, I know that person. You know, so, but you can put like diagnoses, the meds they're on, and that will just kind of help reiterate what you're learning uh, in clinical. So. So yes, that is what is in my clinical bag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe below so you can see more videos. I will have a nursing school content video posted every Wednesday and a weekly nursing school vlog posted every Friday. So make sure to check that out. And you can also find me on, I made a new Instagram, so I'm now back on Instagram. Uh, it's Blossom with Jessica and until then, till next time.